There's arts and crafts in here. All right, so welcome back to Basin Motorsports. Today I'm going to start on the wide body piece, and I've just randomly selected the uh, passenger rear quarter to at least start on. So as I mentioned before in kind of the overview, I'm going to put in a fuel filler door on the flare itself. Now to replicate that, I mentioned I was going to use cardboard, so basically I've used a piece of cardboard. Now this is the stuff that I uh, was a, kind of the big, heavy, thick craft paper. If you remember, I did uh, use some of this on the back of the headliner when I put that in. If you don't remember, I'll throw you a link up there. And you can watch that where I use this stuff. Now this is the sun visor or the sunshade piece that I cut out that I kept because I knew eventually I would need it. And what I'm going to do is just basically put it on the back side. As you can see, I've just made a shape. So now this is the shape inside and all the holes. And now I shouldn't need a couple of these holes. These are the bumper and then these are the uh, mounting holes here that I won't need because they're actually going to stay in the metal and I won't need them on the extra piece on the flare so before i drill these i'll stop double check myself and then uh, do them that way so now that i've got this shape i'm going to cut this shape out and then i'm going to bring it to the outside here and use this shape to define where this needs to be around this way so basically i'm going to have a ring showing me this way that i can then take over to the um, the flare and use that ring inside there to define where everything needs to be cut out Okay, so now with the opening cut out, so this is obviously the fuel door once it flips open, you'll have this opening here. What I can now is you can feel where this goes on here and you can feel the edge. So I'm just going to use a pen basically and put pressure on it and then just give me a rough estimate. Now, once I get a line all the way around where I think it is, what I'll do then is just use some scissors, trim along that edge there and then fine tune it from there. So just remember, take your time as you're doing this and kind of sneak up on it versus just going right at it and thinking you got it because if you go overcut it, well then it kind of just makes you go, oh man, it didn't, didn't work. So uh, sneak up on it, give yourself a line all the way around where you think it is going to be, and then you can just use some scissors and done. Okay, so there's the finished product. You can see the line on the outside, and now I'm just going to cut it with some scissors. Okay, so with the ring cut out now, now I can just try to fit it. See how it fits. Not bad. But what I want it to do is I want it to sit at the bottom of these edges. So I need to do a little bit more trimming and I want it to sit flat in the bottom of this groove here so that when I transfer it over to the flare, it will also sit flat in there and then I can just easily trace it versus having to position it. So what I'm gonna do is just basically just cut on one edge Get it to fit on on the bottom and then I can set it in there in the place and then start going on the sides and then the top. Rather than going all at once, just do one side at a time to make it a little bit easier just to kind of fine tune it. Okay, so here's the final kind of version of the ring itself. You can see the field doors opening and I've got the two mounting bolts here. Now, I haven't done these two for the bumpers or the inside filler attachment pieces. Don't need them right now, so I'm going to leave them alone. But if I take this ring off, I'm going to go ahead and put this flare back on here and then put the ring on it to see how it fits. Now with the flare put in place, you can kind of see the ring fits. Now it's not exactly a great fit, but it will be when I'm done. So all I've done is really just kind of replicated this opening here is what I'm really targeting, but I'm using these outer edges to kind of center it so that when I mount the fuel door in here, it will fit in there. Okay, so you can kind of see the fuel door here is gonna fit. So if I just laid it over it, even though it's curved the wrong way, you'll know that it fits pretty well in there. So it's gonna fit, it'll fit okay. The one thing to note though, is that you've got this big curled piece that sits down in there. And I already can tell you that this is gonna be deeper than between this and the inside metal. So what I'm gonna to have to do is actually recess that metal in and decide what I wanna do. If I want, obviously I'm gonna to have to cut it out to be able to fit all this behind there, fit all this in there. So it's a matter of, do I want to, um, basically build a pocket on the back of it, or I don't know yet. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do. I need to double check that. Um, just make sure the, the OEM piece in there that goes in the plastic may actually contain that to where I don't need to put a pocket in the back, but I will have to take the metal out at least. So more work to do to live the dream, but 
sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Okay, so with the body piece done or the fuel filler outline done, I know where it goes. I'm going to start next working on fitting the panel itself to the body. Now I know along the edges this is going to fit very tight to the body line because it was actually pulled or the mold was made from an actual fender so it should fit tight. The place that I know that it has too much material that needs to be removed to get it to fit is going to be along this bottom. So you can see in here it's blue. What I've done is just basically used blue planers tape and I've covered everything on the inside and that is just literally to have a non-black surface to mark against with a sharpie. So I want to put the fender flare up, kind of clamp it in place of where it should go, and then I'm going to try to mark on here with just a black sharpie to give me a rough estimate of where I need to cut. And I'm going to use a uh, cutoff wheel, basically. Cut through this, get it close, and then start fine-tuning where the, the bottom shape of this fits to the bottom of the fender so that all the contours around it fit sharply and fit flush to the body itself. All right, y'all, so I've got the rear quarter now fit to where I think it should fit on the body itself. The wheel well opening is roughly where it should be. If I go to the inside and come straight out, the wheel well of the flare is about where it should be. I've made marks along the top of where the holes are gonna go, so I've got the curve here on the flare with a line on the tape, and then I did the same thing on the body so that I'd be able to visually see when I stand back that the body lines, the curve in it, match both front and rear, and it gives me an idea of where it should be vertically, and then I can adjust it horizontally. So I've cut open the fuel door, used my template, and I just did a uh, silver marker to do the outline internally. I then used a cutoff wheel basically to get it close, and then I fine-tuned it with just a right angle grinder, and this is a 40 grit disc. So this stuff will go very fast, so when you cut it, be very careful. Remember I said inch up on it, and I did make a mistake on this bottom side here that I need to fix later on uh, in some fiberglass or in the plastic, but it's gonna be pretty easy to fix and it won't be a big deal. So I, I put the rear bumper back on to make sure it all fit, and I think I'm about ready to start drilling mounting holes. So this is the scary part to me because uh, once you start drilling holes in the outside body, there's no going back from that. You can uh, you could resell this stuff and somebody will probably pick it up for what I bought it for, but putting body uh, holes in the body, I'm getting uh, nervous on it. So I'm gonna double check my measurements and do that. And then let me show you these marks of what I've got so you can kind of see if you wanna do it yourself. I show you front and rear, here's both of the marks. This is the flare, here's the corner of it, and then this is the body. You can see that those match up. If I show you right in the fender well itself or the fuel filler, that's pretty good. That's that's almost dead center of where it should be. And then I've got my mounting marks there. Show you on the back side of this. You've got it roughly about a half inch, but it matches pretty well going down. Not perfect, but it's there and then You'll see this little jog. Now this comes the way it is. This jogs out and around the fender and the bumper itself to go behind it. So it should fit on the outside of the bumper and give you kind of a, an arrow look. So on the front side, you can see that here's the door, the lock. You can see I need to adjust this up just a little bit, but this is where the mark is from the body curve itself. So you can see I've got basically one inch down, one inch in, and this is where I'm going to mount, and I'm actually going to pull these up just a little bit to be about halfway. If I show you this is what it should be for the thickness of the top, I'm going to go halfway down versus three quarters. So this is uh, from here to here is eight inches. Of course, same measurement down. And then this one in the center uh, is another eight. And then this is the said center of the front to back, and this is nine from this over and then this one over is nine. And that's just to make it centered on the piece so that it visually looks correct versus having uh, two pieces here close together because I came from one side or the other. So now coming down vertically on, you can see the fender coming all the way down and then right to the body line there. And this is where your body side molding fits where it should be. And then if you go down, you notice that it's going to curve back this way towards the door. And then also if I show you the wheel well molding or opening, I slide forward those are pretty much in line and yes I'll need to cut out the top but I'm worried more front to back at this point so there is front to back 
you can see they do open up and match. All right, so now with my marks there, what I really need to do is just change my marks, shift them up a little bit so they're halfway up and down here. And then I'm gonna drill a pilot hole basically through this and then double check that it matches. Now when you're mounting places where you're going to mount, these should be touching all the way down right to where it gets almost to the curve of the body. But you can also push on them with your finger and these should not flex. Because if you try to squeeze them down and tighten them down, what you're basically doing is putting all the load of the clamping force on the rib nut or the rivet or however you're going to fasten them to the body. And you don't want to have that where it's trying to push out against your fasteners because it can cause them to loosen up with, with vibration and that. So make sure once you think you've got everything close and the body lines match, push with your finger to make sure that there's no flex or no uh, give in the parts to make sure they're going to mount correctly. Okay, so with the pilot holes all drilled, I double checked all my markings to make sure my body lines matched. And I drilled a pilot hole, just a small drill bit. I don't even know what size. It's very small, like an eighth inch maybe. And that's just literally to mark uh, where the hole goes through the fiberglass, to the fender, and then where the holes go into the metal itself. Whew. Now it's time to go get my rib nut kit, put the holes in for the rib nuts, and then put those in the body. All right, so I'm starting to put in the rib nuts in the body. So I chose to use a quarter by 20 rib nuts which are basically what these are. And they are just basically rivet that goes into the body and then you use a tool, basically when you clamp down on this, this pulls it in and it basically, like a rivet, pulls the backside through through the threads and then basically expands it out on the, nut, the metal itself. So I've got one here and then I'll do these other ones. So in order to do a quarter by 20, and I just verified it with some calipers just to make my mind right, you can use a 3 8 uh, drill bit. So I'm thinking I needed to do something fancy and I don't. Just a 3 8 and just don't go crazy. Make sure you're not hogging the hole out because this won't fit in it. Now since this is going into the body and into the panel I may not know it's leaking so I'm going to put in a little bit of butyl. So this is just stuff I've used, uh, you know, I used on the back side of this. Used it everywhere. It's just basically the rubber butyl. It goes kind of anywhere in the car really. Tail lights, whatever. So I'm just putting a little ring around the outside and then as I pull this, the rib nut itself, pull it, it's basically squeezing the uh, butyl into the hole and kind of uh, sealing it so that when uh, the bolt goes in the middle here, nothing's going to get around the outside and go in the back. A little bit extra corrosion protection just because I want to do it and I have it. So if you don't have it, it's really kind of up to you if you want to do it. If you have a track only car that never sees rain, don't even worry. I'm just getting ready for the worst case scenario on this. So I just kind of show you, you see the black on there, that's the butyl on the, on the back side. So when I push this into the edge here, this butyl is basically going to expand out and kind of go all over the place and that will seal it and I won't have to worry about water leaks. So the way the basic rib nuts work is I just basically take the piece, thread and mandrel, open this up, which extends it all the way out, twist all the way down, and then when I crank this down, this basically pulls the piece together and then squishes this metal. So it kind of crushes it down and gives it a ring on the back side. That way it doesn't pull through. Push it all the way in. Squeeze. Out. You just thread it out. And there it is. Okay, so with a couple of fasteners just holding the flare on, it's in. So I originally bought two inch button head screws. Now these are black anodized. I didn't know how long they needed to be, and since I'm kind of doing this pioneer way of the rivet nut, so about two inches. They're way too long, I knew that, and so I think really you could get by with one inches. So if you want to do this, just get the one inches, and then I've got, you can see, I've got a washer also on the back just to help distribute out the load and that. So I've got two in the back, got one up front to at least hang it by get some pictures and all that fun stuff. Now I need to go through and double check all my other holes because I'm wondering if some of the stuff moved. So 
everything else looks like it's pretty good. So I'm going to leave it there and uh, come back a little bit and do some cleanup in that and get this thing right. So all the pieces that I've used so far, the tools of the, the rivet tool, the rivet nuts, the screws and all that stuff, I will put down in the links. Uh, put the links down there to Amazon stuff where I bought it. So you can uh, follow suit if you want to do that. And I think that's good for today. So I will leave you with that. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, hope you're enjoying doing this because it's kind of fun. We'll see you next time.